Hey everyone, welcome to the National Liftoff event for the 2022 National High Altitude Balloon Challenge for Civil Air Patrol's Aerospace Education. My name is Captain Bob Roberts. I'm the Director of Aerospace Education here in South Carolina. And along with me, my co-director is Susan Millette from the National Headquarters, uh, part of the Education Outreach. And we want to give a special thank you right off the bat to uh, Major General Edward Felka and Dr. Jeff Montgomery. Uh, Dr. Montgomery is our National Director for the Aerospace Education. And without these two gentlemen's support, we wouldn't be here again this year. So we want to give a special thank out, thank you to those two individuals. And with that, we actually have a much bigger team this year. This year, we have a much bigger team. Last year, we had a much smaller team with uh, Stratostar and um, Susan, myself. We had some help locally. For the most part, it was a really small team. Now, this year, we've grown that team substantially. Um, we, we are wanting to be prepared for... Uh, much more teams to jump in. Last year, we kind of had a limit of how many teams we had. This year, we don't really have a limit. Um, everybody that's going to register is going to fly. So with that, we have a much bigger team. And so I want to give a special thank you to everybody that's on this team. If you're somebody that's interested in joining our team, please reach out to me. Um, and you know we'll look at where you could possibly fit in. And if not this year, we can you can help out next year. Now, in addition to our national team, we have a very special individual who was our project ambassador last year, and we are so honored that he has chosen to be our project ambassador this year, and that is uh, Colonel Joe Kittinger. Now, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to watch this short video that kind of explains who Colonel Joe is, and this video comes from our friends over at the Air Force Association. Space is hostile. It's very hostile to man. Blood boils at 65,000 feet. The Project Excelsior was the first time anybody was outside of a spacecraft in a space environment. I'm Joe Kittinger. I spent uh, 29 years in the United States Air Force. Half my career was spent in research and development, working as a test pilot. The other half was a fighter pilot. Uh, I was a project officer on Project Excelsior. The two objectives of Project Excelsior was first, how to protect a man in a space environment, and second of all, how to provide the means of escape from very high altitude. When a person ejects extreme high altitude, he is uh, liable to spin. And the higher you eject, the more spinning you could do. Unfortunately, we didn't have aircraft that would go that high. The only thing that could get up that high was a balloon vehicle. The takeoff was in the morning at about six o'clock. The climb uh, time from takeoff to 102,000 feet was about an hour and a half. And 40,000 feet, which is where my pressure suit inflates. And I suddenly discovered that the pressure suit glove in my right hand was not working. I knew that if I told the people on the ground that it wasn't working, that they'd make me abort the flight. So I opted not to tell the people on the ground that I had this problem. I could not use my right hand uh, during the flight. Everything I had to use my left hand. Uh, it swelled up about twice its normal size. Well, the sign on the bottom of the gondola was this is the highest step in space. Think about being at 102,000 feet. It was a very interesting experience for me to sit there and look at the horizon. And I could see over 400 miles from that altitude. My guy on the ground said, okay, we're over the position, you're cleared to jump. And I jumped. I fell for, uh, it seemed like I wasn't moving at all. There was no crystal, no velocity. There's nothing you can see. So I rolled over my back, I looked up, and I saw the balloon flying into space. I said, my gosh, that's amazing. And then suddenly I realized that the balloon was sitting still and I was going down at a fantastic rate. And then the small drogue chute came out and I free fell, stabilized from that altitude all the way down to 14,000 feet when my main parachute opened. And then it was just a question of getting down to the ground. When I landed, my team was right there immediately. We were just ecstatic because we had accomplished what we set out to do. We had shown that man could go into space and work properly. We showed that we could protect him in a space environment. We showed that we could get a man down from high altitude. So there were a lot of firsts on the program. And as a result of this test, today, some 54 years later, every ejection seat in the world uses a small drogue chute to stabilize the free fall from high altitude. We were breaking barriers. We were setting uh, new goals and, and exceeding those goals.
All right, so like I said, just really amazing that we have Colonel Joe again to be our product ambassador. Super happy about that. Um, he's super excited for all of you to get involved and he'll be with us at the next events. Um, now, Colonel Joe, um, Jason Kreger from Stratostar and myself, last year we did a really nice long interview um, and podcast with Colonel Joe. And if you wanna hear more from Colonel Joe and what it means, this project means to him and some of his experiences in his life, feel free, you can go ahead and you can, you can go to that link down below. Um, or if you go to our YouTube channel, you'll find his videos there. All right, now on to the High Altitude Balloon Challenge. Again, this video is really just to give you a taste. It's not gonna go into the real details, but it wants to give you a taste. So this way, if you're interested in joining, you'll be able to share this videos with your cadets. You'll be able to share this videos if you are a cadet. You'll be able to share this videos with your leadership and your unit. Say, hey, listen, I'd like us to be a part of this. Um, and give you enough time to do that. Now, uh, what we're looking to do is we take your experiments from your squadrons and we're gonna send them up to about 100,000 feet. Last year we had two balloons. One balloon got a little over 100,000 feet and the other balloon went a little under 100,000 feet. But they almost just got to 100,000 feet. So you're gonna be able to take your experiments and you're gonna be able to move them into space. Now, what we're very excited about this year is last year was our first year. We had some real restrictions on how many units we could fly. We still flew a lot. We flew about 100, over a little over 130. I think it was 133. Um, but we had a limit on how many units we could fly. We do not have that limit this year. We want the problem of having too many units that want to go flying. That's a good problem for us to solve. Um, we can fly more balloons if we have to. Now, each participating squadron, you're gonna have a couple of to-dos. You're gonna have mission patches you're gonna have to generate. You're gonna have to come up with science experiments. You're gonna have to come up with presentations. Um, if you're going for the Kittinger Cup, there's a video presentation that you're gonna have to put together. So there's quite a bit to do. So we, this is not something where you're just gonna scramble off on one or two aerospace nights. This is something that's gonna take you some time. Now the good news is, is that we have a lot of time this year baked in to fully roll this project out. So you're gonna be able to really get with your squadron and come together and really put together an awesome presentation and really put together some awesome science experiments that everyone's gonna be excited to see. Now, our actual launch event is currently scheduled for Saturday, August 6th. Now, we do have, obviously, if we have bad weather, you know, we're going to push that. But that event is just like last year. That's going to be a live event. Now, it could actually be a longer live event if we have more balloons that we have to launch. But I think that anybody that was part of the event last year can tell you it was pretty exciting for all of us. We were able to track the balloons. We were able to track the aircraft in the air. We had ground teams. We had a UAS team. We had a fully staffed mission base. It was really, really exciting. And this year we have more experience than we had last year. So we're really excited for what we can do this year. Now we do wanna give you some very basic guidelines just so that you can start thinking in your head uh, what your team may want to do. So the general guidelines are you're gonna be getting a 50 milliliter vial and now this vial with your science experiment inside of it cannot weigh more than 40 grams. If we put this vial on the scale and it weighs more than 40 grams with the capsule included, then you're out of the running. We won't be able to fly you. So it has to be 40 grams or less. Um, and obviously everything has to fit inside of this vial. If it's too big to fit in the vial, you'll know that before you send it to us. Um, you don't want something in here that's gonna expand, that's gonna push the cap off either. Um, there's no liquids, no food, which requires refrigeration. Obviously these are gonna be getting mailed around the United States. They could be sitting in a classroom for a little bit before they go flying. So you don't wanna put anything in here that requires refrigeration or, or a freezer or anything, else, anything like that. Um, obviously nothing that's alive. Don't put any mice, don't put any ants, don't put anything in here that's gonna to wanna to get out. Um, so don't put anything in here that's alive. Um, nothing that's radioactive. 
I don't want to glow at night. Uh, nobody that's working with this stuff wants to glow at night. So no radioactive uh, materials. This is going to be going up to 100,000 feet. That's very important. Also very important, no explosive materials. And again, I mentioned before, no expanding materials that expand um, significantly when they're colder or hotter. Everything expands for the most part when it gets warmer. But nothing that it's really like, you know, like a foam that it will expand or something. The other important thing is that you can fit more than one project into one capsule. As you'll see a picture down here, we had lots and lots and lots of different projects that all fit inside of the capsule. Now, the other thing you'll notice here is on those little baggies, they have an F and they have a C. And you'll notice on our, see if I can make this bigger. Come on, let's see if I can make it sharpen. Anyways, you can trust me. Um, one of them has an F on it and the other one has a C on it, plus your, your unit's number. Um, the F means flight. It's what's gonna go up into the air. C means control. It's what's gonna stay on the ground. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna make a scientific hypothesis of what's gonna happen uh, to your experiment when it is exposed to the, basically the edge of space. Um, you know, you've, you've got only got a very, very small atmosphere when you get to 100,000 feet. Uh, it, is, it is roughly the same atmosphere, believe it or not, as what you would expect on Mars. So if you wanna do an experiment, and you can call it a Mars experiment, um, you know, you're going to have just about the same amount of radiation, um, the same amount of atmosphere, things along those nature. So you're going to compare what flew with what was in your control, see what the difference is between the flight and the control. And that'll tell you whether or not your hypothesis was correct. All right. So we have some really important dates for you to kind of lock in. The first one is February 22nd. That's when this video is going live. That's also when registration officially opens. Uh, you have until midnight. Uh, April 30th to register your team. So there's a lot of time to register your team. Now, the week of May 2nd, so the week after April 30th, we're going to start sending out these, um, these vials and your kits uh, with some additional information, some mailers. So you won't have to mail, you won't have to pay for your own postage or worry about where you're going to mail these. We're going to include the envelopes for you to mail them right away. Um, now it's very important is that by July 22nd, you have to have sent us back those projects. Um, your mailers have to have a postmark of July 22nd or earlier. If it's postmarked after July 22nd, it's no good. So if you run to the, the FedEx office after they've closed on July 22nd, they're not going to ship it. They're not going to receive it till the 23rd. You're going to be late. Um, we may still launch you but you're not, going to be, you're not going to be up for the running to win anything. Um, now, we're going to get all those in. Our primary launch date is going to be Saturday, August 6th. We are going to have a live broadcast the whole day, all the launches, the recovery. Um, we're very excited. Is Last year, we were able to track the aircraft, um, and we got some voice cell phone calls from Michael Austin, uh, who's going to be there again this year. Um, you know, telling us what was going on on site. This year, it's going to be different. We're actually going to be able to do video footage from the airport, from the ground team, from the drone team, the US, UAS teams. Um, we're going to be able to do, you know, live footage of all that. So, so cool. I'm very excited about that. And then if the weather's not good on August 6th, we're going to shoot for August 13th. If August 13th is not good, then we'll let you know when we're, we're going to plan to re reschedule the next launch dates. Um, okay, now, once we get the launch date done, we are going to repackage your control and flight vials. We're going to be putting them into another envelope mailer. It's going to go back to you. Um, you'll receive them, you know, give or take three days to seven days. Um, and then you'll have about a month and a half uh, depending on when you get it, to submit your final reports and your video submissions. Now, those, unlike the registration, which has to be done by midnight of your time zone, those final reports and video submissions, those are going to be due by 11.59 Eastern time zone, so my time zone. Um, and that's just so I can keep everything, you know, straight. Um, so, again, that's September 26th. We were actually going to do that earlier, but we decided to move that back. I think it was two weeks. So we're going to give you more time 
to review your findings and to create your video submissions. We, we, we heard from you over and over again um, from the feedbacks that we got last year that you just wanted a little bit more time after you get your vials back. So ask and you shall receive. Um, and then you are going to submit everything by September 26th online. And then the official award presentation is October 22nd. Um, so we're going to start on the 22nd and we're going to end on the 22nd. Okay. And as I mentioned earlier, last year we had 139 units actually fly. Um, now I want to give a special shout out here. We partnered with Stratostar and they managed a lot of the logistics. They managed uh, the sending of these vials. They had a nice box and they sent everybody the mailers. Um, they, they, they got all the vials together. They organized the launch balloons. Um, they did a lot of that stuff. Um, Jason was kind of my co-host here and I really want to give them a special, if Jason's watching this or anybody from Stratostar, that team, I want to give them a special shout out and thank you. We couldn't do this really, um, as, as well in our second year without your help in the first year. Um, now we, because we're flying ourselves and with all volunteers, one of the things that's going to change is we are going to fly everybody. If we get right now, I'm expecting three balloons. Um, but honestly, if we get more teams than I can fit on three balloons and I got to go to four balloons, I got to go to five balloons. That is an awesome problem for us to have to solve. Um, so we are going to try to stop. We're going to we're not going to try. We are going to fly every single team that gets to us. Now, one thing I need to ask for your special help here. So please pay attention to this. Please do not register to join this event until you know that you are going to fly. If you register, the expectation is you are submitting and you are taking part of this project. Last year, we had over 180 units signed up and we had 139 fly. So whatever that comes out to be, 30% of units that signed up did not fly. Um, we have to plan logistics around your unit um, when you sign up. So it's super important that if you register, I want everybody to register. If I get every unit in America to register, unbelievable, right? Um, I'll, we'll deal with that on our side, um, having too many to worry about. But I, if you sign up, you are committing that you are going to fly, that you're going to do this project. Um, and again, the other big thing is that we are going to have live production. As I already mentioned that. Um, we're going to have actual mission sorties, tracking, recovering. Um, we're going to we're going to come into the mission control room and show you how that works at CAP. I think that'll be really exciting. Okay. Now, what are the awards? Right. Of course, you have the number one award. You get to work together as a team in your squadron, seniors, cadets, uh, working together hand in hand. Um, you know, just. Just work in the science. Uh, that is the number one reward. Now we have monetary rewards if you needed more than that. Uh, we have monetary rewards. We have a hand-drawn patch, a digital-drawn patch, creative science award, project of distinction. I call the wow factor award. Um, documentary video, innovative science, and of course, the Colonel Joe kitten jerk up. Um, now let's talk about real quickly what these each are. Now, hand-drawn patch, exactly what it says. Here is our three runners up, and then the one in the middle um, uh, from California 214, Kramer Composite. They were our winners last year. Gives you some good examples of what some really awesome hand drawn patches. Here's some good examples of our digital drawn patches. These are our three, our top three from last year, with the winner being Clearwater. Now, creative science. Don't confuse this one with innovative science. So, creative science is really the presentation right? You can have the best science experiment in the world, but if you don't have an attractive way, a good way of showing that information, no one's going to pay attention to it. No one's going to know it existed. And so how you present your information is super important. That's what creative science is. Creative science is the look of the presentation. You may have the worst science experiment in the history of mankind, and that would be very, very sad for you. <laughs> but if, but if you took that horrible, that horrible science experiment and you made an incredibly beautiful graphic and you even put in there, why, why, you know, why was it so bad? <laughs> what would you do different next time? 
but you know you really explained yourself really well you made you made your presentation engaging um so that if somebody was walking by a hallway in a university they would want to stop and take a look at it that's super important um and this is actually the winning presentation from bellingham composite squadron so congratulations to them all right project of distinction i call this the wow factor we didn't even have this award last year identified before this came in. Um, what we had is we had a, an electronics kit that came in. Um, and, you know, they, they, had a, they were good all around, right? They had lots of good things. Their presentation was good. The science was good. All that was good. But it wasn't the best. Like there was, you know, there was a little bit better, right? <laughs> so, but it was like it was so different compared to what everybody else was doing. And it was really a wow. It's like, wow, look at what they were doing, right? Um, now, they actually had electronics in it. And I'm not saying you have to have electronics to win the product of distinction. I'm expecting a lot of people are going to have electronics after they see this. They're going to try to do some electronics. Um, product of distinction doesn't mean electronics. So don't think that. But it's just something that's just different. Um, and we're kind of wowed by it. Um, you know, maybe the science, somebody else has a better, really, you know, raw science experiment. But yours, yours we just kind of went, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, and that's what this one was. So, you know, um, Arizona 334, Davis, uh, Montan, Composite Squadron, hopefully I said that right. They had some electronics in there that had a uh, digital read, uh, reading of the balloon as it went up and came down. Now, we had live tracking, um, but they had tracking inside of their vial, which I thought that was really cool. Very important. If you're going to have an electronics, you have to have an easy, you, you don't want the battery plugged in when you're shipping it, right? So you have to have an easy way for us to turn this thing on. Um, and, and for there, as you can see in the top left, they had a switch. Um, all right, documentary video. I got a short clip here. This was our, uh, our winner, um, Delaware 20, North Chesapeake Squadron. Um, they also had a very awesome um, science experiment. Let's uh, go ahead and watch theirs. So our experiment was on dental film and we had some really good results from the experiment. So right here is a light table of what happens when the dental film is exposed to different levels of radiation. So on this side, this is no radiation all the way to the most radiation, so it's jet black. And our control and our experiment were both exposed to some levels of radiation during their travels from here through the mail. But the experiment got a lot darker than the control. It was probably somewhere closer to this while the control was closer to that. So that shows that while it was in space, it was exposed to some form of radiation, which darkened its color in the end after it was developed. Although Civil Air Patrol has a set standard of four core values, Colonel Joe Kininger helped us add to that list. Through listening to his video biography and just working on this challenge, we learned the importance of teamwork, setting goals, dedication, hard work, and staying organized. All of these attributes played a role in the final results of our project. Okay, well, that was a short snippet of um, Chesapeake Cadet Squadron, and uh, they just did a really incredible documentary. Now, what I recommend for everybody is you have a, a, a beginning portion of the documentary, right? You want to have a video, two minutes, two and a half minutes, of the cadets working on the project um, and, and what it means to them, and their science goals, everything along the lines. Have the cadets really drive that. To be honest with you, unless you're a videographer, your cadets are probably going to be better at video production anyways than you, right? So um, have them work on this. And then um, when you get your, your projects back, you know, finish up that documentary video um, with, you know, kind of the results of your experiment. Okay, now we're down to the last two awards, right? And the two biggest awards, and they should be. So the Innovative Science Award really is, if you look at like who's going to win the overall Colonel Joe Kittinger Cup, this is like, I don't have a rubric to share with you on this presentation, but this is going to be like the main thing. Um, so if, if you have a bad science experiment, you're pretty much out of the running. So you want, the science has got to come first, right? Um, you can make it look pretty, you can do all that stuff, you can have great hand-drawn patches, digital drawn patches, um, but you really, it comes down to you gotta have the science. So um, this is Burke Composite Squadron, Virginia 130. Uh, they won last year. This was an example of what they did. Um, again, you can have multiple experiments in this vial. 
But for your um, award-winning, you want to have one screen. Now, you could have one presentation for each. Actually, I would, right? So if you're going to fly six um, experiments in this vial, I would have six of these screens. But make the very first screen the one that you want us to pay the most attention to because that's going to be the one that we're really going to be grading. Um, and again, comp uh, Burke Composite Squadron, uh, their top science experiment was on um, how does alt high altitude, uh, the environment affect adhesive strength. Kind of important. You don't want things that are glued together coming apart if you're expecting them to stay glued together. Um, so they did some really, really great uh, experiments for this. And they actually came back and they actually looked at how much force was used to pull the, the pieces apart um, with the control that didn't go into space and the, um, the flight vial that did go into space. They re, re, um, examined the results. Um, just absolutely fantastic. And there you can see that their altitude, they were in the balloon that didn't quite get to 100,000 feet. Um, they got to 87,000, a little over 87,000 feet. Um, just they did a fa fantastic job. All right, one of the other things that we heard a lot from last year was people wanted to have a better understanding of exactly how their projects were going to be graded against other projects. Um, and they wanted kind of more of a feedback after the fact of, hey, how well did we do? We didn't really hear anything. We know who the winners were. We knew who the top three people were in each category, but we don't know where we came in. Were we the worst? Were we the fourth? You know, we just don't know. Um, you know, so what we're going to do this year, because uh, we've heard that from a lot of folks, we want to make that better. So we have an entire team this year and that their, their sole focus is going to be designing a grading rubric. We don't have that today. The team is just starting to form. So what we're going to have is that team will put together uh, their own presentation and they'll really go into the details of exactly how each of these um, science experiments and projects are going to be graded. Um, and then as well as the, the actual grading team, uh, the team that's actually going to do the judging is gonna be different than the team that's creating the rubric. And the reason why is the team that's creating the rubric, they may actually be a commander um, or an AEO of their squadron. If they're doing the judging, then that would disqualify them uh, from being able to win, right? That wouldn't be fair. Um, my squadron last year, we didn't compete because, you know, it would be unfair if they did an incredible job, you know, they really can't win, right? Somebody say, hey, Captain Roberts is, you know, throwing them a little bit extra. So, uh, so we don't want that to happen. So there's going to be people that are judging that aren't involved with the individual units, but you are going to get a much more detailed analysis, uh, both before the event of what the rubric is going to be, as well as when it's all done and the competition is over, the goal is that each unit will get a little score sheet of how they did, okay? All right, we're almost done. The other thing important is cadet-driven senior sponsor. We don't want this to turn out to be a fourth grade science project where mom and dad create the volcano and the kid comes in with the volcano and everybody knows that the kid didn't make that volcano. Um, so it's very important. We want the seniors to be involved with the cadets but cadets, this is your project to drive. We want you to run this project. And with that, I am happy to say, registration is now officially open. Um, please make sure you register before midnight on April 30th. Um, also, we have several units that wanted to work together with others. Our, our national champions last year, uh, was two units that work together. And so you can work together. You can have a senior squadron working with a cadet squadron. You could have multiple cadet squadrons working together, whatever. The big thing is, is that one of you will register. So let's say there is three squadrons that are going to work together. One of you needs to be the lead squadron. That lead squadron is going to be who's going to register. What you're going to do is there's going to be a comments field. And in that comments field, you're going to put down the other two squadrons. Here's the important part of that. If you are a winner, let's say you win the $5,000. The lead unit is going to get the $5,000. So it will be important for the lead unit and the other units that are working together to kind of decide maybe in advance, hey, if we win this thing, how are we going to split up the money? Or if we you know, win the hand-drawn patch right, for a couple hundred bucks, 
how are we going to split up the money, right? We as the national team are not going to be part of that. Um, so we didn't have a problem with that last year. The teams were awesome. Um, but we just want to make sure we, we want to promote. We know that there is a lot of smaller squadrons out there. So feel free to work together to make yourselves, you know, uh, have more team members and make yourself bigger. Uh, if you feel that's going to help you, just know that there is one lead unit. Um, if you win, we are going to highlight every unit that was in there. It's just the winner of the financial money is going to be that uh, the one that registers and you guys can split it up after the fact. All right, enough of that. All right, well, welcome everybody. So, all right, so we got two things. Actually, I see my mic just went way up here really loud. Um, so, got two more things. We have two short videos to show you tonight. Um, and so the first video is we actually had our award winners from last year um, got together because, hey, what do winners do? They keep doing. Um, and so we have a short video for them. Um, let's go ahead and watch that video. The best part of this project was that we were able to be creative as a team. We are able to brainstorm ideas for objects that would be impacted by going into the stratosphere. We looked at the impact of radiation, pressure, and temperature on everyday Earth objects. Some of the most interesting projects that we sent to the stratosphere included bacteria, x-ray film, hair, and even an eyeball. If you're a creative cadet, this is the perfect challenge for you. I think one of the best things that came out of this HAB experiment was working with my team and effectively developing those communication skills so everyone had a say on what was going on with the project. We grew to trust each other's opinions and positively give each other feedback. So teammates and teamwork goes a long way. Colonel Kinninger is a major reason to compete in this challenge. He's an inspiration to us all as the first man in space flying to the stratosphere in a high altitude balloon. He's incredibly passionate about the future of aerospace and is the biggest supporter of youth engagement, even going so far as to personally sponsor a $5,000 cash prize to the winners of the competition. We were given the opportunity to sit face to face with this great man. He shared his knowledge and experience with us, encouraging us to continue our futures in STEM. In doing so, he taught us that truly, the sky is no limit. Participating in the Kittinger Cup National Competition was an extraordinary opportunity. We worked hard, yet at the same time built friendships that will last a lifetime. Our senior member mentors truly supported our ideas. That was fantastic. This challenge was the opportunity of a lifetime. Aim high. Unmute myself. All right, um, we did get an additional question. Um, I got this question from Sean, and the question was, what are the dimensions of the tube for the experiment? Um, we'll actually post on the website the exact dimensions, plus you'll be getting these um, pretty pretty soon. I, I would say it's probably, it's in metric, right? So I'm not sure the metric conversion, but I would say it's probably a little over a one inch circumference. Um, again, it's circular on top, right? So it's a tube. Um, so a little, it looks like to me like a, just a tad bit over one inch circumference. Um, and if I had to guess, I would say, I don't know, maybe three and a half, four inches long, some of that range. Um, all the dimensions will be up online. Um, let's see here. I had one other, I'm looking for any other questions. And again, there's about a 30 second delay. Um, I'll actually see your questions as soon as they post. But there's about a 30 second delay between the team. I'm saying something live and the time you're hearing it. There's a, there's a time delay in, in YouTube. Um, let's see here. So I have one more video to show before we wrap up. And that is actually a video that was produced by Stratostar last year that kind of shows some of the highlights. Um, and you can actually see this video as well on Stratostar's website. They have a bunch of other information as well. Uh, so if you're super interested in learning more about high altitude ballooning, uh, you want to see more about what Stratostar specifically can do. Um, they are not our partner this year, um, but we're super thankful for their help last year. And so I want to give them credit for where credit is due. Um, this video was produced by them last year. And if there's any other questions, go ahead and put them in the comments section down below, and I'll respond to them once I get back.
All right, unmuted again. All right, yeah, so that was last year's um, mission. It went off incredibly well, especially considering it was our first year. We had some incredible volunteers, um, even braving the world of COVID last year. Hopefully we won't have that issue this year. Um, now, before we wrap up, one team, actually, are RF emitting devices allowed, i.e. radios, transmitters, etc. Yes, as long as you meet FCC guidelines, I don't have a problem with them being in, um, you know, in a tube. The big thing is, this is true for anything that's going to be electronics. That's a really great question, Sean. Um, for anything that's going to be in this tube that's going to have electronics, you got to remember, we may have several hundred of these things. Um, and if 100 people put, you know, electronics in them, it could be really hard for us to turn them on. Um, and, you know, the battery could die within, you know, the hour it takes to turn them all on. So um, you're going to want to make sure if you do any type of electronics at all, that you you make it ridiculously easy um, for us to turn it on. Um, if you have electronics and it doesn't get turned on, you know, please have another, you know, frankly, another experiment that's in your tube. Um, I can't promise that a volunteer isn't going to not, you know, put a battery on right or something like that. We're not going to have time to test it out. So just try to make it the, the other, the team that got the wow factor that had the electronics last year, they had a switch on. Right. So it was super simple. Um, so make it really, really, really fast and really, really simple to turn on. Um, let's see here. And last thing before we wrap up and before I give the final thank yous, um, we still need some volunteer help. And so whether that's you, whether that's somebody that you might know, um, I mentioned about the grading team. All of our teams have some great volunteers. The teams are all built out. The one team that we're a little light on is actually the team that's going to do the grading. So I have enough people that are building the rubrics, but I'm still, um, I'm still light on the actual people to do the grading. So if you know anybody that would be really interested, anybody that's done, I don't know, maybe you're the Swedish ice skating Olympic you know, judge or something, <laughs> um, you know, reach out to me. There's going to be lots and lots of emails coming out, lots of public information coming out. They're gonna have an email address, a website to go to. On there, there's gonna be an email address. You're gonna email that address and say, hey, listen, either yourself or somebody you know of, um, preferably just have them send the email, is, you know, would be interested in volunteering. When we get done with this year, if you, this is something that you say, hey, listen, this thing is awesome, and it is. I really want you to, I really wanna be involved in this next year. Um, when we get done next year, there's going to be an email that'll come out looking for volunteers right away. Just ping me, uh, send a note to that email address and we'll get you on the list. Um, we've started meeting about a month ago. Um, you know, it's almost like a, tw you know, a year round, uh, project at this point. So absolutely, uh, get involved, looking for great volunteers. Um, all right. I think that was pretty much it. So we are done. I want to thank everybody registration is now open. Do me a favor. I want all this information blasted out to as many people as I possibly can. I'm looking at my counters. And if I look at Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and Twitch, and if I look at all the different streams that we've got running right now, we've got about 160 people, which is really great. That's more than we had last year, almost twice as much. Um, so that's, but there's a lot more people out there. So this video it lives in infamy. So especially on the YouTube channel here. Um, so go ahead and share this link to anybody that you think might be interested in it. Registration is going to stay open again till April 30th, midnight. Please don't miss that. It'll be midnight your time zone. Um, so with that, I uh, can cadets grade. Sean, that's a super great question. I don't, I'm not going to have an answer for that right now. Um, I, I don't know. Um, I'm going to come back to that answer. That's a really great question. And another question I got um, from Mr. or Mrs. B. Kane, is this event always to be flown in Indiana? There's nothing that says it has to be flown in Indiana. Um, Indiana is where the location was for our, our uh, vendor last year. And I will tell you the Indiana team, the wing, uh, Michael Austin and the whole on te site team, they did such an amazing job. Um, also, for that time of year, Indiana works really, really well from a weather pr uh, pattern perspective. Typically, the winds and the rain. It also has a lot of farmland. 
Um, so we don't have to worry about, you know, the balloons coming down, you know, as much like on an interstate or in a prison <laughs> or something like that. Um, so, so it, it's really, it's really, um, uh, Indiana really has proven great. And the team there has been wonderful. Um, so, so far the answer is we're going to stay in Indiana. Um, uh, but the, you know, there's nothing, there's no, like, no CAP laws that say we have to fly out of Indiana, but that team has just been phenomenal. I can't say enough great things about them. Um, Alex asked the question, can AEMs register a team as of right now? I'm sorry, but the answer is no, this is going to be open only to, um, CAP squadrons. So, uh, possibly in the future, we're going to see how this year goes. This is our second year. Um, you know, I'm not going to say never in the future, but I'm sorry to say the answer is no for this year. Um, some really, really great questions at the end. I don't see any other questions that are coming in. And, uh, so with that, I'm going to wrap it up again. If you have any questions that you came up with afterwards, or if somebody that you're trying to get interested in to get this signed up, um, yeah, Susan just reminded me, uh, yeah, Indiana is, is the time of year is just perfect. It worked out absolutely incredible last year. Um, so if you have any questions, there's going to be a, a common email address. If you email that, our admin team is going to see it. Susan and myself, the co-directors of the program, we're going to see your email. And the only thing I would say is, you know, for the next couple of days, um, give us a little bit of time. If you don't see a response back within a day, just give us a day or two. Uh, we, you know, there, we may get flooded with questions. Um, but please, if you have a question, please ask it. Um, all right. With that, we are going to wrap this up and I hope everybody learned something. Go out, tell the rest of your cadets, tell the rest of your senior members. And once you are on board to go, go flying with us, please register and we'll have a great time together and we'll see you all later. Bye-bye everyone.